Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about endometrial carcinoma on ultrasound. Endometrial carcinoma is the primary malignancy of the endometrium. It is the most common gynecological malignancy. On ultrasound, it has some overlapping features with endometrial hyperplasia, but a few findings do differentiate it. We will compare the endometrial carcinoma images with normal uterus ultrasound images for better and easier understanding. These images are transvaginal images. They provide better detail. In the normal uterus, the echogenic endometrium appears as a smooth curvilinear structure. And the second thick layer is the myometrium. The upper part of the uterus is on the left in this longitudinal image, the fundus. And the cervix is the lower part of the uterus seen on the top right side in this image. In a suspected endometrial carcinoma, there will be diffuse thickening of the endometrium, which appears as a mass, and its echo texture will be often hyperechoic and heterogeneous. It may have a mixed echogenicity in some cases. Endometrial carcinoma usually occurs in postmenopausal women, and the most common clinical presentation is postmenopausal bleeding. On ultrasound, the endometrial thickness is usually greater than 4 to 5 millimeters in postmenopausal women without hormone replacement therapy. If the thickness is greater than 10 to 15 millimeters, it raises a strong suspicion. But keep in mind that malignancy can occur at lower thickness. Ultrasound alone cannot confirm endometrial carcinoma. But it is very helpful in deciding whether further investigation, such as an MRI or a biopsy, is required or not. In this case, there is diffuse endometrial thickening with some hypoechoic fluid areas. Due to this, its overall echo texture is heterogeneous. One important feature which distinguishes endometrial carcinoma from endometrial hyperplasia is that the thickened endometrium or mass has irregular contours. This irregularity strongly indicates a malignancy and biopsy is very important to rule it out. Still, it is not always carcinoma, as in a few cases, this can also be seen in endometrial hyperplasia, but it is less common, and that is why biopsy is done to confirm the disease. You can see these irregular borders of the mass, and also it has a heterogeneous appearance, which also indicated carcinoma. This area is more irregular and this indicates myometrial invasion, another feature of aggressive disease. In some cases, you may find anechoic cystic areas within the thickened endometrium. This is due to necrosis or glandular dilation. You may also find a collection of anechoic fluid with echogenic material. This is the thickened endometrium, and this is the anechoic fluid with echogenic areas. This can be fluid or blood. Subendometrial halo is this thin, hypoechoic layer surrounding the endometrium. This represents the innermost part of the myometrium, known as the junctional zone. Loss of this normal, hypoechoic, subendometrial halo indicates myometrial invasion. Here, we do not see the hypoechoic halo as it has been disrupted by the mass. This mass has irregular contours and a heterogeneous appearance. On color Doppler, there is increased, irregular, or chaotic vascularity within thickened endometrium or mass. This increased chaotic blood flow is another indicator that it is likely endometrial carcinoma. 
On spectral Doppler, if we calculate the resistive index of this flow, it will be below 0.4 or 0.5 for increased vascularity related to endometrial carcinoma. Let's summarize the important findings and additional clues. If postmenopausal bleeding is present and endometrial thickness is greater than 5 mm, biopsy is strongly recommended. Another additional clue is if hydrometra, which is clear fluid in the uterine cavity, or hematometra, which is collection of blood in the uterus, are present in an elderly woman with irregular endometrium, it is strongly suspicious for endometrial carcinoma. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.